Welcome back. This is step four in a four-step series of Ubiquiti setup. Uh, this is going to be on the Flex HD access point from Ubiquiti. Let's get started. back to Geek Smart. So if you haven't watched the previous set of videos, um, this is the fourth one. While the third and the fourth are both for access points and they're going to be very similar in their setup, they will be different in how they're mounted and where they can be mounted. This is the Flex HD. Now this one is a little bit different than the last one we did, which was the Nano, because this is actually a indoor or outdoor mounted access point. Now I'm considering, and I haven't fully uh, mature my ideas of where I want to place this yet, but I'm actually considering doing this one outside. Obviously, you won't know it'll go right into the with the mounting and, and uh, setup of this guy, but I haven't fully decided yet. We'll find that here shortly. Let's bring it in, let's take it out of the box and see what comes with it, and then we'll get to the setup. Okay, so here's the box is the UAP Flex HD. Let's pull it out of the box. Oh boy, come on. There we go. So this one, also like before, we do get a uh, power over ethernet injector. So if you don't have a switch that has PoE, this is an injector. Oh, I didn't notice that before. This one actually, come, they actually come with mounts, so you can actually mount them. That's nice. Uh, also in here, that's the power cord for the injector. All right, so there is the tube. Oh. And then on the bottom, uh, looks like there that's the mounting bracket right there one of them there's our power of ethernet ethernet plug-in there's the reset button there on the bottom as well need a nice long little pin all right let's see what else comes in here Ugh. quick start guide gives the qr code to get that gives you some information on how to actually use these brackets all right let's see here so we have a wall mount bracket of some kind there. I'll have to take a peek at those instructions. There's another bracket there. That looks like it's in the bottom. That goes with the wall mount itself. So it kind of looks like it. Aha, there we go. So we have this, these two pieces that came with it. It slides into it. And then you, you have that wall mounted and that sits down below. And then that can then uh, slide into that. Yep, that slides into that. And there we are. Now, no matter what you do, you have to obviously be mindful of how you're going to run your cable, right? Um, so in this case, it appears as though you can actually pop that. Yep, that back right there comes out. You can see that. Right, actually, you just break that off. And then your cable can come out of the wall and go directly into this guy. And, and be hidden. So it's going to be, um, let's put this back right there. Right, so it's going to come out of the wall directly into this. You're not going to see it from down below. Maybe if you look in that bottom hole, you'll see a, a whatever color cable you'll have. But it comes straight out and straight into the actual access point. So it's going to be a little bit tighter in that regard. Um, but it's going to look really clean. You got to give it that, right? It's going to look really clean. Um, very, very well built. They do give you some zip ties as well. Just uh, two of them, but nice white zip ties. I'm assuming that's if you want to actually strap this to a pole of some kind. Um, or I wonder, yep, it's actually the mount. The mount is actually the thing that you strap with the pole so you can see the two zip tie locations. So you can zip tie this to an outdoor pole and, uh, and it'll be good. I'm assuming that these also screw into each other. So we have the mounting hardware down in here. Um, so we do have some mounting hardware pieces in there that we're going to go through. Yay! That should be it, I would assume. Yep, that looks like it. So once I figure out where we're going to place this guy, we're going to get into actually setting it up. Um, and again, it's going to be all done through the app. So, And there also is a recessed ceiling mount where you can actually hide it up in there. That's probably sold separately. Yep, sold separately. So there are different ways you can mount this guy. So that's pretty cool. 
Okay, a couple more points before we do. I go outside. I apologize. A um, couple things I noticed. So first of all, the, one, the foot that actually was in the unit before we pulled it out, or when we pulled it out, it's for a desktop uh, uh, space because it does have a nice rubber foot, so it actually is designed to sit, so it doesn't scrape or pull away, right? Um, so that's that is does have the openings for the cables, both top, bottom and uh, back. So that's that guy. Also, if we're mounting it on the wall, which I'm going to do, and uh, I'm I am going to do it outside. Uh, that's what I've decided on. You got to watch what cables we're going to use. Uh, and this is actually, no matter where you place it, you got to watch what cable you're actually using to uh, to connect it. Now, if you're coming to, uh, out with a raw cable and then you're going to uh, terminate it, that's going to be the easiest bet because, let me I have one right here that I terminated before. Um, but yeah, this, you know, it's going to go in here. You're going to get uh, a lot of maneuverability of the cable, right? Uh, so that'll work just fine. Um, if you're going to go outside with it, it's probably best to use an outdoor rated cable, so something that self seals. Um, trying to find my outdoor cable if I have it. Uh, but that's what I would recommend using uh, if you're going to go outside with it. That said, what I wouldn't use is these factory cables like this. So these are fantastic cables, but you'll see that they have a really long backside for supporting the cable. And if we plug them into here, um, we don't even really have any room to maneuver the cable without it being outside of the unit, which is not going to work with the mount that actually comes with it. So this cable here does not work with this mount. Um, even if you're going straight out the back, you really, it's really a pain because you got to still be able to bend it down to slide it into place, and that cable does not allow it. Um, there are some other factory cables, kind of like this guy, a little bit better, but not too terribly. They're still, I mean, you're still talking about a really, really, really tight, crazy crease. So uh, it's really designed for self-terminated cables, I think, from what I can tell, because that way you get uh, at least a decent radius on the, on the bend. Uh, but that is something to note. Something with a really long cable. This one right here definitely will not work. This cable here, I can get to work, but it's... <sighs> it's not preferable because you're still going to have to bend it at this thing. So watch what cables you have and what cables you're doing. If you have a self-terminated cable, it's probably going to be your best bet to be honest about it. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's go out and start mounting this bad boy. So this is uh, the south facing eave of my house. Uh, faces the majority of my yard. It's on the outside. The nice thing about this is where you don't, maybe you can see a little bit, there's a, I'm on the eave, so I have actually some protection where I'm thinking about placing this is kind of like right here um, so that I can get a really good coverage of my whole backyard. What I can do here is with this, uh, let's take the whole mount. Don't want that to fall anywhere, so I'll place that in my pocket. So now I can look at where I want to mount the bottom. And within this as well, I can actually take a marker basically just the screw holes I'm just going to mark the screw holes so you can see the two dots the other thing to consider as well is where the cable now I'm going to actually pop the back of this guy off so to just take the back piece off so now I have the full back opening and that's where my cable is going to come through so I'm just gonna draw a box up there, and I'm gonna drill out. Hopefully, I'm gonna drill all the way through, because uh, this is all wood all the way through, and then I can pop the cable up. Now, worst case scenario, if I hit something where I just can't do it, then I can come out the bottom and just feed it through the side here. I actually gotta fix this anyway. There's some screen damage there, but at least I can come through the louvered vent here. But that's where I'm planning on putting it. So I'm going to, uh, I guess, drill those pieces out quick and uh, start mounting. So um, 564 was my first drill bit for the two small holes for the small screws that they provide. And I used a uh, 516 inch drill bit for the Cat 6 cable that's coming through. 516 allows plenty of room for it to easily maneuver through. So I'm going to have to shoot this cable through real quick so I'm gonna go do that and I'll be right back and then we'll mount that guy on there so this cable here is actually not outdoor rated I don't have any left I have to order some more 
but for now I'm going to use it like it is. So, uh, recommended if you're doing outdoor, obviously use outdoor rated cable because then it self seals kind of. So, I'm going to go ahead and put this kind of thing together like that. And then I'm going to stick the cable through it and mount it. Okay, so now the cable is still, I can go in and out with it because I'm going to have to push it in as I, as I bring it down. But at least I can have it out here and I can terminate this real quick. So I'm going to get my tools to do that. Always a really good idea to to make sure that you label your cables so you know what's what. So I've already labeled this one down below at, at my rack. Now, take this, and this is not powered yet. You know, I don't have it plugged in down below at all. So, ta-da! The last step is locking in place. This is the, it only came with one of these screws type items here that basically goes in the bottom to lock it in. There are two holes, uh, so I'm just gonna use one of them. And that's good. Okay, so we have the Flex HD mounted. It's good to go. Uh, it should be ready to boot up. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect it to the switch light just like we did last time to a power over ethernet switch port, which I'm gonna select port 14. On this specific switch, which is the 24 port, one through 16 has PoE plus. So um, we're good on any of those ports. So we are connected. So let's just give it a moment to boot up and then we'll go into the app and get it set up and make sure it's ever and adopted into the network. All right, we're going back one more time into the Unify network app. And from this side, I've already, I'm, I'm already logged in. I'm right now under the devices, which is the second tab. And you can see the Flex HD ready to be adopted. So we're gonna get in here and hit adopt and bring it into our Unify experience. And then it should allow us to automatically connect to the wireless network that we already have. And you can actually see my phone already automatically connect to it because I use the same SSID and password that I've always used on all of my networks in my home. Now, like I said, we can create multiple VLANs, we can create multiple wireless networks, we can create uh, guest networks, you can create a lot of things with these. They're fantastic in their capability and it is provisioning so it is looks like it is adopting properly. And uh, yeah, you can see how many clients are attached to this thing. Wi-Fi experience, 94, 95%. So connected, there we are. Flex, we'll give that a few minutes and uh, yeah, we'll make sure everything is properly working. And so ends our four part setup. We're gonna go into a fifth part video here next on the whole, my experience overall as the entire set and we're gonna talk about each product again. But as a setup wise, very easy to set up. Once you have the Unify system up and going with one of the Dream Machines, in this case the Dream Machine Pro, it makes it really, really easy uh, to set this guy up, specifically if you're going to integrate it in with the Dream Machine. Now you can also set this up independently, and so as long as you have PoE going to it, you can just set this up as a standalone access point without using a Dream Machine, and that'd be through the manual or the direct access to the, to the, the uh, uh, access point itself, which you can do... But in this series, we're doing a setup with the Dream Machine, which is not direct. So uh, if you want me to go over a direct access with this, let me know in the comments below and then I can show you how to do the direct access. Otherwise, it's fairly simple. You use the app and when you set this guy up, you have to scan the QR code on the bottom side of the Flex HD or the back of the other ones uh, and you go through the app with that. It's fairly simple, um, but you set up each one independently where with the Dream Machine, we're using that as a controller it's then controlling these, and we don't have to worry about that. We can have one SSID, and it'll just spread out all over all of them. So um, pretty awesome for the setup of it. This one can be tabletop, can be wall-mounted, can be pole-mounted. They give you the zip ties and everything for a pole mount. So um, I obviously did an outdoor mount, and I'm really happy I did. It's working fantastic, and the coverage I'm getting in the backyard of my house is better than I had anticipated. I, I walked 150 feet away from my house back where my garden is. I was getting 160 megabits per second to Netflix to fast.com. That's amazing. 
I'm a huge fan of this thing already. So um, if you're looking to add uh, an indoor or an outdoor uh, antenna or uh, access point, this one can do either. Uh, but the, the big flexible option is this and why it's called the Flex HD is because it can be used outdoors. So that said, guys, thank you for watching. Stick tuned to the next video, the fifth and final video in my ubiquity set for the setup here on GeekSmart. And that's my overall thoughts and my ins and outs of when I set it up yesterday. So thanks for watching. Click next in the next video down below or here somewhere. So see you soon.